section 3.1 we're going to do exponential functions and um, basically those are functions uh, whose equations contain a variable in the exponent so f of x is equal to b of x or recall we say f of x is the same thing as saying y equals b of x where we want b has to be greater than 0 and it cannot equal 1 in the case where uh, x is any real number. So let's just see a few examples of those. If I have f of x is equal to 2 to the x. Okay, that's an exponential function. Uh, let's look at another one. g of x is equal to 10 to the x. Or a third one we can look at, a third example would be 3 to the x plus 1 because all of these still have a variable in the exponent position. Um, one in particular that's not, so let's see one that's not, would be f of x is equal to x squared, and that's because the variable is not in the exponent position. So to give you just a few examples of exponential functions, and one in particular that's not, we'll leave that there. All right, so we want to look at graphs of these types of functions. So we're going to make a um, table of coordinates. Let's just make an xy table. And let's just pick some values. Let's just do um, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And if we're plugging that into f of x is equal to 2 to the x power. So our function that's given to me is 2 to the x power. So when we evaluate that, when we let x equal negative 2, we would have that expression. It's hard to see. Well, what does that mean? Remember, if you have a negative exponent, what do we do to rewrite that as a positive exponent? You remember in algebra, we would just bring the exponent to the bottom. Now it's a positive exponent. So what is 2 squared? 4. So that's just going to be 1 fourth. Good. So we come over here and we put 1 fourth. All right. Let's evaluate f at negative 1. Because that was f evaluated at negative 2. So that means we would have 2 to the negative 1 power which would be, what did you get? One half. Good. What is anything raised to the zero power? That's just going to be one. Good. Now go ahead and evaluate f at one and evaluate f at two. So when we evaluate f at one, we just get two to the first power, which is just two. And for this one, we would get 2 to the second power, which is 4. Now, we're going to take a minute and plot these ordered pairs. This is our x value, so is our y, to get a sketch of our graph. And so this is a sketch of it. These values get really, really close to this axis. So now let's look at another exponential function, but this time our base is 1 half to the x power. We're going to make a table, and an x um, table coordinates, and go ahead and fill that in to sketch the graph as well. Okay, so I started with x equals negative 2, and this is my function, so I plugged in a negative 2 right there. That means because it's a negative exponent, I brought it to the bottom, and then I evaluated this x squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, because this is the same thing as saying 1 half times 1 half. And then this simplifies. Remember, if you multiply by the reciprocal, then you're just going to simplify to get 4. Okay, and we're going to do that similar thing to compute the rest of these values. Okay, if you check this, you know, check your work on that one, and we get 2. Okay, continuing those out, we'll get these x, y values, and now you want to take a minute to plot that graph over here. Okay, so this is our graph. Now let's look. They're both exponential functions, but the graph of this one increased to the right, and then if we compared it to the graph of this one, 
it increased to the left. So what do we think makes that, what's the difference in that? Look at this function. This is 2 to the x, and this one's 1 half to the x. So what would help with this is if we flip over here and we look at this, we can see that the graph, an exponential function, f of x equals b to the x, is going to increase to the right if our base is greater than 1. Remember our first equation, it was a 2 to the x. But if it's less than 1, between 0 and 1 specifically, where we have 1 half, then it would be this red function. So that's what we actually see going on right here. Remember, if this is greater, this base 2 is greater than 1, our, grass, our exponential is going to increase to the right. If by chance we have an exponential function where it's between 0 and 1, we have this case. So we, we got to actually work with one of each so we can have that comparison. I'm going to do that. So here we have a new graph, f of x equals 4 to the x. So we assume this is going to increase to the right because this base is 4 and it's greater than 1. Um, and then we can use transformation of functions to get an idea of what's going to happen here, but let's use a XY table to actually graph this and then we'll verify our information um, using the ideas of transformation of functions. So let's go ahead and make an, an XY table and let's use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to pause it so that you can take a few minutes to actually do these calculations. Evaluate at f at negative 2 and you get 1 16th. Evaluate f at negative 1 and we get 1 4th. I'm pausing this but take as much time as you need to try these calculations on your own. Those are the rest of our values and now we're going to sketch our original function and then also sketch the graph of f of x equals 4 to the x. Okay, the black is just a, a sketch of our parent function that we talked about before, and then the next one we'll do blue, we'll do f of x equals 4 to the x. Okay, sorry about the color switch there. This function in um, blue I actually graphed it over here, so this black graph matches all of this data. And now we need to go do that same thing with red. So let's go do g of x. And this is going to be 4 to the x minus 4. And we want to evaluate our g of x at these same points. So then we can compare the graph um, of this graph compared to this graph. Okay, we're actually going to just compute values of x being 4, 5, and 6 because all these other ones, if we use these same x values, they were super tiny, small answers. And you can see why when we put it in the graph that they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, when we evaluate it at 4, for example, we're going to get the order pair 4, 1. And if we compare point for point, we can see this 0, 1. What happened to it in respect to the red equation? What did we do? We shifted this point to the right four units. Using transformation of functions, we could have known that already. Remember, we think opposite if it's in the top. So what would the equation look like if I wanted it to be shifted down four units, just so we don't confuse that? So for example, if I had some function h of x, it would be the original function. And then we would say minus 4, like that. This particular equation would be down 4 units. So I want you to see the difference between one that is right 4 units up here, which is our, our problem. This is a transformation, and this tells us to, to go to the right 4 units. And just so you have a comparison, this one is the one that would represent down 4 units. Um, because in your homework, more often than not, you're going to use the transformations to give your solutions instead of all this tedious calculations.